I think the wood tradition is something that you, you just don't come into just because you want to make furniture out of wood. Uh, it's something that's been within the family. It's sort of in your genes, this uh, love of wood. You can see his love of wood in the evolution of this American walnut. It will be transformed from tree to slab to finished wood sculpture. Even though his wood sculptures are shown in museums all over the world, Nakashima makes furniture that is a part of life, not distant from it. Furniture that's to be used, not enshrined. He feels that the wood has a soul. George Nakashima's life began 84 years ago in Spokane, Washington. To help pay his way through college, he worked on the railroad as a gandy dancer. Have you ever heard of a gandy dancer? It's kind of a dancing movement that you do with the shovels to get the gravel underneath the ties. And I made a handsome sum of 27 cents an hour, which at that time wasn't bad. From Spokane, Nakashima went on a journey which took him to Seattle, where he studied forestry. Then to MIT for architecture. On to Paris for design and modern art. His journey was fitful as he searched for a life of simplicity, directness, and wisdom. Everybody was poor. Nobody had any money, and it was a wonderful, creative life. But gradually I felt that that was not the answer. There'd be times when I'd turn a corner in the crooked streets in Paris and, and I'd have an overwhelming feeling of death. Premonitions of death became a reality for millions as World War II erupted in Europe. Soon after Nakashima returned to the West Coast, the Japanese struck Pearl Harbor. Though born in America, George Nakashima, his wife and baby daughter, were sent to an internment camp. It's a very rough life. Our child, my our daughter, was only six weeks old when we went in. And uh, my wife, she was very much concerned about, you know, whether she could feed her properly and whether what her health could be. But the family stayed healthy and intact. For George Nakashima, like many of us, a tragic event, ironically, had a good outcome. While at the camp, he became an apprentice to a Japanese master carpenter trained in the ancient tradition. He learned a skill which remained with him all of his life. The way out of the camp was through the sponsorship of an American architect he had known in Paris, who offered him work. In 1944, he came to New Hope, Pennsylvania, which has been his home ever since. Over 40 years later, with his wife Marion, Nakashima's still at work, continuing his love of wood and searching for its soul. His daughter Mira, who was a baby in that internment camp, and his son Kevin, 33, will carry on the tradition. Trees do have a soul. I know that with a tree, you can read the whole history. If one has the eyes to see, you can tell when there was a great drought. And you can tell when there, when there was an injury that was healed over. You can tell when there's a great happiness in a tree, that the joy and express itself in its grains and its bark and its fibers, just like human beings. At the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City, Nakashima's Altar of Peace. I have practically no feeling of regret for anything that I've done. If I were to do them over again, I might have done them differently, but uh, 
but that's, I think, anybody's prerogative to develop things in his own way. One of our jobs, I think, is to take these great living things that have died or will die and give them a second life. It's a great feeling, I think, to be a part of that, to be a part of nature and to be a part of life itself.